hello everyone and uh, thank you so much for joining us for, to, for the 2020 MA show um, and you're welcome to the Institute. It's We're not here on the beautiful Brampton Road campus, we're not here in the, the lovely gallery space but we are here and we have been for many many years a community practice. This has gone on unbroken uh, despite what Covid can throw at us. Uh, here we are joining together as a community of practice to enjoy the work, to respond to the work, to give some feedback to, to our, our, our colleagues, the artists who are exhibiting today. Uh, and I particularly would like to welcome everyone who is a graduating BA student who's found the time to come and join us and to see what their, their MA colleagues have achieved and, and to the MA artists themselves. You are all extremely welcome. Um, we're, um, we, we've got a chance to comment, to respond in the chat box on the right. We'll keep those comments, we'll share those comments, uh, uh, and so please do do comment uh, if you have anything at all to say. So as ever, uh, I am rather overwhelmed by this exhibition. I'm hugely excited by it. I'm very proud and slightly awestruck by everything that's been achieved. Um, we're an education institute and we always look ahead to the creative potential of the people uh, who, 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 who attend um, as learners, uh, but we also have a chance today to celebrate them and their achievement and the work in its own right. Um, I always, always think that the, the artwork is something that follows the artist. If we nurture the artist, then the artworks will follow. Um, our artists have had a lot taken away from them in this last year. Um, they've had access to physical spaces taken away. They've had the material conditions that they are used to working in changed completely and they've had to adapt to them really quickly. Um, they've had the ability to collaborate face to face and to meet and critique each other's work face to face taken away also. Uh, it's been a difficult year. It's been a really challenging year. But um, this group of artists have proved themselves to be absolutely unstoppable. Their works thrived. They've managed to uh, push through the difficulties, to adapt, to flex, to change, to find audiences. And I just want to say that that's absolutely superb, absolutely terrific. Their work has um, thrived in this very difficult year. Um, so just to address the artists now, I just want to say that you've shown extraordinary inventiveness, extraordinary resilience. And that in this exhibition, your creative voices have emerged really clearly. You've got a really inventive cohort. You've shown a huge range of work. I mean, in short, just as the director of the Institute, I want to say you've done us proud. You really have. Um, uh, and thank you for, for sharing the work today. It is really difficult times for the arts. You're graduating into a difficult economic climate. But when this crisis is over, we're going to need art and artists more than we ever did before. So you will be part of the process of our society recovering from this crisis. Um, and I am confident that you will be uh, in a great position to thrive and to make the most out of the opportunities that exist. So uh, a final uh, moment to, to thank you all and to thank the people who've taught you and the people who've worked with them, my colleagues across the Institute. Um, I can take very little credit for this, uh, although I'll try, uh, but but most of all to, to, to thank the te teaching colleagues and technical colleagues who've, who've worked so hard alongside you uh, and to thank you yourselves um, and to thank everyone who's here today, uh, who's come to, to enjoy the work of the artists. We've got um, a short video that's going to introduce each artist. Uh, that's going to be shown uh, it, that that will be um, uh, shown in a moment or two uh, and then please stick around and we'll, we'll get to talk uh, to some of the artists and some of my colleagues uh, who contributed to the MA uh, in, in a moment or two. Um, so please watch and enjoy the video, stick around for a chance to talk, to listen to the artists um, and, and an email will follow with all of the links to the rest of the work that's not in, included in that introductory video um, and a chance to, to find out a little bit more about each artist through, through email links. Um, so thanks very much, everybody. Thanks to all the artists, all my colleagues um, at the University of Cumbria uh, and congratulations on the success of this year. And thanks to everybody who's joined us today. So without further ado, um, I'm going to ask Paula to play for us the introductory video.
Um, if you missed me earlier in the event, I'm part of the marketing team here at the University of Cumbria, and I will be dipping in and out of this uh, of the screen, just interviewing uh, students and lecturers. So to join us now, I would like to invite Nick Dodds. Um, he is the program leader for um, creative practice, and he will just tell us a little bit about the course, and I'll, you, you'll hear me asking him questions as we go along. So um, I'll introduce Nick to you, bring Nick to your screen. Hello. Um, hello, Nick. Um, so can you tell me, can you tell us a little bit about um, DMA Creative Cra Practice um, degree? How is it, what is it about? Uh, well, this is our fourth year actually of the uh, DMA Creative Practice. So it's a still a fairly new, fresh out of the box uh, uh, type of program and as the name suggests the MA creative practice uh, is commercially orientated but it's a broad range uh, broad based MA masters program so the, the, the diversity of our practice is I think and I know our unique selling point so what that means is that our students come from a range of disciplines and creative backgrounds and you'll see that borne out in the, the video that you just showed uh, and the work that uh, they produce. So we have uh, filmmakers, we have script writers, we have concept artists, photographers, illustrators, designers, the occasional poet. Uh, and in the last few years, we've also had students from a, a contemporary applied arts background as well. So which makes for a, di a diverse and fantastic fantastically interesting uh, mix. So the range of work produced as evidence here is always exciting and it always keeps the program uh, staff, the teaching staff on their toes, which I love. I'm always learning new things and I think that's really important uh, as a lecturer, uh, as an academic, as a practitioner, that we're continually learning, continually striving as well as the students. And it also makes for a, a dynamic teaching environment um, because what you get in the lecture theatre, where we are in a lecture theatre, is you get have a, a broad range of students and a key aspect of MA work is that they um, in, introduce their, their work, they explain their ideas, they, they, they critique their ideas, they theorise their ideas, but they do that uh, in front of a peer body from a range of disciplines so they get a range of different perspective a range of different perspectives to bear in their critique um, it's worth also saying that theory and practice is a crucial element of the ma it's, it's a rigorous ma so students uh, we encourage students to contextualize their work to uh, produce work that's informed by theory that grows grows out of theory um, so given that broad range that into that multidisciplinary aspect of the course, uh, students who come to us can either specialise in their chosen discipline. So we have you know, filmmakers who come on the course, they write their script, uh, they produce the film, pre-production, post-production, and that's what they do. Or students can work across disciplines. So we and we actively encourage students to experiment with different media. So the two interviewees we're going to be talking to today, uh, you know, have done exactly that. They've embraced totally the, the ethos of the MA creative practice and that they, they've explored different media in their work. Uh, it's also worth saying that we, we're, we're an MA that uh, encourages collaboration, professional collaboration. Uh, we're outward facing. We encourage our students to you know to seek opportunities out there uh, in 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 the field uh, to work with clients to work with commissioning bodies uh, and again you'll see that in the works being produced this year so i think what i know the ma creative practice reflects a progressive approach to art study and it reflects a broader creative industry where those traditional boundaries which were very apparent to me when I when I did my undergraduate and postgraduate you know they're they're kind of uh dissolving so they're no they no they no longer exist so we encourage students um 
to be lateral thinkers, to 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 have a knowledge of different creative processes, to anticipate actually what's coming around the corner. Uh, and these are all essential qualities, especially given the terrain that we're in uh, and the situation that we're in that, that uh, Colette outlined in her introductory talk. Um, so I just want to kind of reiterate actually what, what, what Colette, said, Colette said about the resilience and fortitude of our students, because obviously this is no ordinary year. And the fact that we're you know, trying to do something online here uh, is, is is reflective of the you know this uh, unprecedented situation that we're in. So um, the students were coming to their final MA project in March. They were just because the module that precedes the MA project is a proposal when they, they research and they write that. So they were so immediately they were just about to start on their final project. Lockdown happened, the campus closed. So as Colette was saying, all those res physical resources were closed to them. So we, we attempted to keep online support mechanisms going. Uh, but it's, it's worth saying that all this work was produced by students um, working in their own homes in domestic situations, you know, so uh, kitchens becoming studios or editing suites. Uh, it meant that they had to build contingency planning into those project proposals. In some cases, totally changed what they were hoping to do. So I can only praise actually their resilience, fortitude, flexibility, and their all round professionalism in getting this work to a really successful uh, standard. So I think what I'll do is I'll end there really on that note. Uh, and what I'd like to do is introduce uh, two of our graduating students this year, uh, Lucy Hadley and Sean Esch. Um, so can I put it back to you, Paula? Would you like to take it from here? Yes, no, no problem at all. Um, so I'm just waiting to get everybody on the screen. Um, so I can introduce um, Lucy, I've lost your camera, so if you could bring your camera back on. Meanwhile, I'll bring um, Sean into, into the picture. Um, Sean produced a, a film called uh, Felt Not Helped. Um, and we will just ask her a, a few quick questions about her project um, and, and the process of, of producing such a, such a piece of work during COVID. So I'll bring uh, Sian to the screen, Sean to the screen. Sorry, Sean, if I'm if I'm uh, pronouncing your your name incorrectly. Um, so, sorry. can you tell us what is your project about and the inspiration and the idea behind it? So initially, I was kind of working on looking at microcultures within kind of small regional areas. Um, so with COVID uh, coming happening in 2020. Um, a lot of traditional festivals couldn't take place, so I decided to focus on looking at the uh, tradition of common ridings, which is kind of a Scottish border town tradition. Um, and what happens if we don't have these traditions that go on? Um, and so I focused on the common riding of Langham, which is 251 years old. Um, and the kind of what it meant to the community here and what it means to express these traditions in a time such as COVID and how important it is to these communities to hold on to these kind of cultural events. Um, so yeah, that was kind of my project. <laughs> That's really good. Um, and what was it like to try and produce um, sort of that level of work in this lockdown? What was, what was the biggest challenge you, you faced producing that work? I think because I was looking at creating something that included not only current footage, but archive footage, I think my main kind of challenge was actually getting access to archive footage and getting access to older footage and, and material to be able to use in the documentary. Um, so that kind of became pretty much impossible. We do have local archives that I would, would have been able to access. However, great thing about that was that I did community call outs through Facebook and through social media 
and loads of people that had already digitized things had come towards me in the community so that was really it was kind of like a good and a bad thing in the end. That sounds really interesting. Um, how how did you find a lot of support in the community for things um, concerning the cultural aspect of the of the area? Were they very keen to get involved? What was what was their take on it? Um, I think there's been a lot of like there's been a lot of local people that have done films and kind of work on the common riding because it's such a popular subject um, and it is kind of the pinnacle like everybody it is the one event that you remember each year in these small towns um, and I think everybody was really open to me because I'm from here and people know me and I've been involved in things over the years like when I was approaching people to interview them people were more than happy to be interviewed and were more than happy to like be quite honest and give quite honest and kind of um, emotive answers so it made for a really good documentary because the people were so open and so friendly and so proud of it and um, there's a real uh, civic pride that goes along with the common ride in which I think hugely comes through. That's great um, and what is the biggest difference, I mean, for you as a filmmaker, um, obviously film works well on the digital sphere as well as on, on the screen, um, on, on sort of big screen. But what was has been the biggest difference for you sort of trying to get ready for a virtual event? Because had it, normally this would have happened inside the Institute of the Arts. Um, you would be showing your, your film um, in, in the theatre there. So what has been the biggest difference for you getting ready to do this virtually um, because of lockdown? I think realistically as a filmmaker practising in 2020, you have to be prepared for everything to be put on virtual kind of platforms anyway. And I think that I, no matter what, when I was producing, I would have always had that as an end goal in mind anyway. So that the exhibition kind of aspect, the lack of that, although disappointing for not being able to show my work in person and not be able to have an event to show my work um, and not be able to show my work post university because it being released digitally, it's meant that I'm having to hold back the full film online because of like applications for film festivals and stuff. And that's obviously quite a shame because I would have quite liked to get people to see it. But um, otherwise, I'm kind of used to producing for digital and it's expected to be able to produce for digital now. And I think throughout the course, we were always producing for with the ideas for digital and physical anyway. So it kind of went hand in hand with that. Sounds, sounds like you've, you you managed to find good elements in in the challenge of of um, exhibiting virtually as well, um, and through that process of of exhibiting virtually and getting ready or, or filming amongst amidst the lockdown, what was your biggest takeaway? What was the biggest learning curve or, or the one positive that you could take from the experience? I think possibly the resilience and the confidence in resilience. Um, I have done this for like the MA full time. So for me, it was a lot. I guess I was doing other projects as well as the proposal when um, COVID kind of and lockdown kind of happened. So I think it is the confidence that has given me and myself to be able to know that you can practice through kind of adversity and still create work that you're happy with and proud of. And that's something that as a creative, I think doesn't often come to you and I think it maybe comes with I don't know more practice but I think that's something great that I've walked away from the MA with. Being able to do that sounds great is there anyone um, sort of to bring our interview to a little interview a speedy interview to a close um, is there anybody who played a particularly strong role um, on, on you getting the work finalised or who you would like to give a shout out to um, or any anybody that you feel has a, a special place in this project for you? I guess probably my family and friends. <laughs> um, when not being able to kind of communicate with other course members the same way as we were having before, really relied on them for kind of feedback and stuff within the work. So yeah, I guess to them, because without them, I would probably not have made so many corrections and done so well. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's great. So you just mentioned something that in, in, in there that I would just like to unpick a little bit. Um, so in, a, in an environment, usually being on campus in an environment with, with other students and workshops and everything else, Nick mentioned before that you work very collaboratively. Um, so what does that look like to you? You would you would get have people watching your film and feedbacking. How would that work if you if you were normal normal circumstances? Um, so previously we'd kind of done the system of we were kind of showing and telling with work and talking about discussing our work with Nick, but with the whole group and seminars um, and discussing our ideas and discussing kind of the work through development. But then also when we were coming to finalising. Um, projects we were showing work and almost finalized like unpolished versions to each other and getting live feedback from each other and that was kind of a great aid throughout the course because it always allowed kind of someone to talk to and just generally having access to the tutors and um, both Nick and Dave were kind of there for us always to go with our ideas to and just send an email to and have a conversation with so I think it's very much instilled in the part of the creative practice um, MA and process within the creative practice MA to have these kind of conversation and conversations to put, push you and your work. Thank you, that's great. Thank you so much, Sean. Um, if you guys have any questions for Sean that you would like to ask, um, please just drop us a note. I do understand there was a, a, an issue with the video sound. Um, we had um, the, the, the sound on the video doesn't seem to be coming across on the presentation. I'm, I'm so sorry um, on the event. And we also seem, seeming to get your feedback too late almost. It's, it's kind of running a little bit of a delay. So apologies for not responding to that straight away. Um, but we will play the video again and the video will be available on the MA um, page later on today. So you'll be able to watch that as well as explore the, the work of our artists on the website with interviews and further work, because what you're seeing in the video is really just the highlight of our students' work. Um, so thank you, Sean. And I'll bring live to your screen Lucy Hadley, who is responsible for the work that you see on our invitation. So she was the, she was the featured artist um, for for that work for for the MA show. Um, sorry, Lucy, just bringing you across. So there you go. There you are. You're live, um, and we can all see you. I won't mute you as well. Try not to make the the mistake we have <laughs> made. Thank you on this event. Um, so, tell us a little bit about your work. You've you've produced a picture book. So tell us a little bit about it and how it came about and the inspirations behind it. OK, so one of the, the key things um, that was important for me, starting with the, the MA, was to explore narrative in my in the work that I produce um, to create more meaningful narrative and to facilitate conversation about the natural world. So I was looking for different uh, vehicles, if you like, where I could experiment with with those ideas and focused on picture books and um, video in the end. Oh, I can't hear you, Paula. Never gets all that trick, does it? <laughs> um, the um, So I was the trying to produce work amongst lockdown. Um, you are an illustrator and you take a lot of your inspiration from the natural world because um, I believe you were a park, you were a ranger, a park ranger in the, in the uh, in your career, is that correct? Yeah, I've spent many years as a uh, as a countryside professional, so community ranger, education ranger, forest park ranger. So engaging audiences in um, in narratives and conversation about the the natural world in fun and engaging ways. I suppose I've I've been doing for years, and so one of the lovely things about uh, the MA and and the, the two areas that I focused on was the ability to, to bring all of that um, into my creative practice and, and I've been really enjoying sort of experimenting with with all of those ideas. It's been great and you've done a selection of things as you know, you've done Drawing with Lucy which is a series of videos and obviously the book which is the main piece of work for, for the MA um, and a, a book uh, trailer as well which is, is 
beautiful. I would suggest everybody to go and and have a watch as well as as watching Sean's um, film trailer. So, what was the biggest challenge for you through lockdown, trying to produce the work for for the degree? But also as an artist, um, what was the biggest challenge you faced? So. When lockdown very first started, I guess the, the most challenging thing for me was just how distracting it was. <laughs> it was um, probably not the, the only one to um, to think that it was just, you know, the, the it was just so unlike anything that's ever been experienced before, uh, that I've ever experienced before. And and the the, the situation was changing so rapidly. Um, hour by hour almost and so having having that going on um, was in, in the world was was really um, yeah sort of made it difficult to, to, to focus um, because of you know the serious seriousness of, of it all um, but but gradually got uh, got focus and um, and unfortunately, I've been creating and um, and writing words and creating imagery in my sketchbooks from my experiences out in in the field, if you like. And so I had a body of work which I could use to to focus on and 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 was able to to use those words and those. In, initial sketches as a starting point for for my my book which um uh, uh which i've called eyes eyes uh, eyes wide ears open thank you lucy um so getting ready for a virtual exhibition how different was it for you and your practice as an illustrator did you have to do anything different obviously if this was the actual exhibition, we would sort of turn up a Brompton Road campus and, and your beautiful work would be in display both, you know, as as, as prints um, on the wall as well as the book uh, for people to be able to experience it in, in, in all, this, all, all their senses. But what was the challenge for you? What, what was the difference trying to get re ready for a virtual exhibition of your work? I guess I guess um, one of the benefits is that with with my book and with the videos that I I, I did, um, you know, those things can translate quite well uh, digitally. So from that point of view, it it was um, uh, it was okay to to move to a digital platform. I probably invested more time in my draw along videos than I I perhaps would have if it was a, a uh, an exhibition, a physical exhibition, um, but but actually, that I think created a, a really interesting um, additional narrative to to my work, and and I'm quite keen to continue to explore that that avenue. But but certainly with the the book, yes, that has been able to to be um, shown on a digital platform. But there were lots of decisions that I made for the book for the for the development of the book uh, or during the development of the book that were assuming that um, you know that they were based on aesthetics and, and 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 a physical book. So the weight of the paper, the texture of the paper, how that felt when in, when engaging with the book, the typeface, the size of typeface, um, the format of the book, the size of it. So all of those decisions I made through the whole process was was, was focusing on the. The, the physical element and and I think you do lose some of the um, so you, you do lose some of the experience by having having it just as a sort of PDF on on online um, so I, I, I guess that was probably that's, that's been one of the, the, the challenging things to, to come out of this. I can completely understand that. It's not the same, isn't it? Having a book in front of you, especially when it's an illustrated book and, and just seeing it on the screen, definitely. It's the same with, with this event. We appreciate everybody that turned up today. We know that it's not the same as being in an art gallery, um, but it's really us just trying to celebrate the work that our students have done, um, you know, the, this, this sort of year um, with all the challenges that they had to face. 
Um, going back to you, Lucy, um, what was the positive? So through that experience, what was the, the one or two things that is sort of came out as a, as a positive for you out of this experience? Um, so I've, I've been de de uh, developing um, sort of poetic narrative, which is quite a new thing for me, and combining that with my sort of visual world that, that I create. Um, and, and that's been a, a, a really exciting um, journey. Also doing my draw along with Lucy uh, videos has always or, or also been uh, an exciting journey as well. Um, quite interesting. And, and I certainly didn't um, see. I, I've always really enjoyed playing with video and, and exploring that as a as a potential media to, to use. But um, but using it in this way sort of has evolved and developed over the last few months. And um, and it's 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 quite a uh, I found it quite an interesting experiment. So so that with with my book, um, I'm, I'm really pleased with with uh, the the, the, the work that I've um, produced during this, the, the, particularly the last few months. It is beautiful work. Well, well done on it. Um, you know, all, all the students work is, is quite incredible, really, bear in mind what, what you guys had to face. Um, your your work, your illustrations are, are beautiful. So thank you. Thank you, Lucy, for joining us. I um, appreciate you, you, you coming in and having a quick chat with us. I will replay the video because some of you missed it earlier on. So thank you for joining us. We have a few more of you that just um, just joined us. Um, I 
we're now going to talk to the contemporary fine, fine arts students and lecture program leader um, Jane Topping um, is the next one in line uh, for the interview. Um, so Jane, I'll just bring you through this through to the screen. So tell us a little bit more uh, about the contemporary fine arts. I mean, we all have an idea of what fine art is, but as I as I come to realize after starting working with the Institute of Arts, is that is actually quite a broad subject and you get really different art forms and, and, and people exploring different mediums. So can you tell us a little bit more about DMA and, and what involves what is what is what kind of art form or, or medium the students study on DMA? Sure, um, thanks Paula. Um, so our MA in Contemporary Fine Art course provides a unique opportunity for those students and artists who wish to further their art practice in any medium or, or, or combination of media in the context of a, of a lively fine art and philosophical discourse, really. Um, so our MACF is part of the vibrant and growing arts research uh, environment here at the Institute of the Arts. Um, and whilst the course is generally, genuinely rather interdisciplinary, in nature, we give particular consideration to um, sight and audience in relation to the development of the, the students' work. Um, I, I, I can just um, keep going if you like, Paula, um, and talk a little bit about the, the artist's work. I mean, I think it's, it's really quite impossible to believe when you look at the range and quality of the work that's been produced for this digital exhibition. Um, that these students lost their studios, the access to resources and to much of their artwork to date when COVID hit in March this year. And it really is a testament to the ingenuity and the integrity, the intelligence and you know the, just the sheer guts of these artists that they not only adapted to the circumstances but continue to develop their research practice to such an ambitious degree. And yes, indeed. They've got so much, they've got access to so much as well, don't they, within the Institute of Arts in terms of workshop and workspace and equipment. Absolutely, yeah, when we have state-of-the-art studios, purpose-built studios and state-of-the-art um, resources that support all forms of interdisciplinary practice, including an amazing print studio that's as good as any I've ever come across, um, and you know, 3D metal and woodwork, um, all supported by expert technicians in those areas. Super. Um, so would you like to introduce us to the, the three artists? I'm just checking that we've got Holly with us. Um, I don't think Holly is with us just yet. Um, but if you could, could you introduce us to the two students, um, Caroline and Leanne, who are with us this morning? OK, just before I do that, I'll just um, say that the products, the artworks um, that are the the products of this art, the, the practice based research that our um, at MACFA students are exhibiting here, their strategies and their methodologies, the production of new knowledge, all of that filters down into the mainstream to enrich all of our cultural lives. So while fine art may seem something that is a little bit out of reach to um, to the man in the street, if you like, it actually plays a, an absolutely crucial role in the richness of our lives. And this is a time when the arts are underfunded and arts cultural importance often seems to me at the moment to be unappreciated or, or even under attack. Um, and, you know, without um, students such as, the, as these, including Caroline and Leanne, who we're about to talk to, um, making their work, um, putting that work out into the world and no matter how they're doing it. Well, without those guys, we may as well just, you know, switch off Netflix and sit in a darkened room for the next six months. So I'm honoured to have helped play a very small part in the development of our artist practice of the last two years. And I know that they're going to go on to contribute to the rich cultural life, as they already do, of Carlisle, Cumbria and internationally as well. So now I'll introduce Caroline Dalton and Leanne Wing. Lund Cowie, who both took very different approaches to fine art practice. Um, I think uh, we could say that Caroline was taking a more materialist approach, which then had to radically alter, and, and Caroline will tell you all about that, um, when COVID struck and, and access to the sculpture area of, of the university was lost for a while. And Leanne Wind Cowie, who 
uh, has been making her artwork and very much about the domestic space and relationships uh, within her own family, and but also uh, how those relationships can um, can operate in in to to to. Uh, help us understand uh, the different kinds of realities that we are all living with and dealing with um, right now. So I'll hand back over to Paula and, and I can't wait to hear what Caroline and Leanne have got to say. Thank you. Indeed, it's very interesting work. Um, I'll start with you, Caroline, if that's OK, and I'll bring you to the screen. Um, so talk us uh, tell us a little bit more about your project. What is it about how the, the inspiration behind it? It's quite an interesting idea and it's very delicate what you, you've created. Um, so tell us a little bit more about that. Oh, sorry, my lovely, you are on, on mute, you're muted. I think you need to press the uh, microphone. Um, Hello. <laughs> there we go, we can hear you now. <laughs> um, well, obviously, the MA is uh, an ongoing research, so you, you're talking about a sort of, you know, a, a long journey of research. It's not really something that we're sort of plucking out of the air. And my interest is in materials and, you know, our sort of connections to materials and things like sort of reliance on materials and dependencies and the allure of materials and how we kind of live with things. Um, and I tend to uh, probe a material to its almost nth degree. Um, so I will sort of, I'll take something and and really immerse myself into every possibility that I can engage with in terms of a material. Um, so in terms of audience, I want them to encounter these materials similarly and to almost activate materials similarly. So uh, very much an immersive practice of being with the things, these tactile things, these delicate things, you know, that I was producing. So um, lockdown for me was a major rethink because as time had gone on, I'd actually started to use a framework of gaming in that sort of active role where you would actually interact and you would take part. And I'd managed to source a few machines like a, an arcade claw machine and um, some tabletop um, gumball machines and such like. And I had this sort of huge scheme of creating this space where you entered in and took part and interacted with these things and these materials. And you kind of took them through this journey and took yourself through a journey and things changed. Well, my God, did things change? <laughs> that was completely uh, not gonna happen in a lockdown. So I then um, had to really sort of come up with very new strategies in how I still pursued my ideas of creating the material and investigating the material and sort of traveling with the material and um, and then had to rethink how I presented that in information. Um, so yeah, so I'm uh, I had a yes. sort of, uh, I had a an engagement with the eye, a narrative of dust, if you like, um, which is probably a bit bizarre, you know. So I had this sort of this process of trying to work with dust from its very beginnings, you know, as a material, and the notion of trying to actually cast dust. And as I was working through ideas, I'd also I was working with the idea of the games and it started with a job lot of arcade prizes of these things that we would see that we would want, that we would want to win and and seek. And I shifted those from their original material into this narrative of dust. And that is essentially what I was doing um, in the production of these things. So when I did that, when I sort of started to cast the dust and these things in this, this compound of dust, they completely changed. They completely took on a new identity, a new um, material substance, if you like. And there was something really interesting about that journey from what we know as disposable things 
and then they become something that's almost like a geological entity or you know and not also a biological entity so they really did go through these sort of shifts and changes that were fascinating to observe and it was a bit compulsive <laughs> Very interesting, isn't it? Because you start to see just how much work goes into a, a, a fine art and a creative practice project. I think when people look at art, you know, and, and there was some bits of art sometimes that you see, especially abstract, where you think, you know, what is this? But there was there was a whole story and a narrative that goes behind that piece of work and a whole array of research, isn't it? So it's quite interesting to find out more about this story behind, which is yeah. what us interviewing you and having a little bit of an interview in your profile page in the MA show website is all about so people understand the practice and the research and the painstaking detail that goes into into that work. Um, so coming out of lockdown, we obviously talked about the challenges and what was the most challenging for you having to completely flip the coins and 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 you know, we're having something different happen. But what positives did you take from the experience? What was, did you have any any positives or any takeaways that will inform your practice in the future? Absolutely. Um, it threw to me, um, I went through the whole process of making the material and I knew that I needed a lot of these things. So actually, to be quite honest, I think a lot of us were, we were really struggling with the, the lockdown in, you know the restrictions of it but at the same time the ma gave us a bit of structure you know and it, it certainly gave me a bit of daily structure where i just thought i have this strategy where i have to make a lot of stuff and i will just go through it moment to moment and and i was actually trying to be, remain very impartial and letting the material do the talking so it was an interesting journey and an interest interesting interaction for me to take part in um, I then sort of went through a whole process of how did I disseminate the information and in actual fact I was interested in clickbait the notion of how we're we're after more you know we we seek more in terms of uh, strategy and pressing buttons and <laughs> all sorts of things wanting more and so I started to work in looking at things like presentation um, where you actually are seeking more and you're going through that sort of virtual um, interface you know so actually that was working for me and I was just using every resource I could possibly draw on and I think we all were really sort of switching into this very inventive mindset um, you know my my project took on everything from sort of digital drawing to photography to the making of these things um to the sort of backstory to them you know and then ultimately i took it into the realm of filmmaking i've never done filmmaking particularly and that for me was a baptism of fire as i described it in my <laughs> my follow-up and it was fascinating i couldn't ever have told you at the start of this project even though we did our project proposal I could never have imagined the evolution at the end point, you know, that I, I would go through such a, a, a sort of expanse of practice, you know, and that's where the MA is wonderful because it actually does allow you to step into one thing and then another thing. And I think my project is very much, you know, the, the exhibition piece, if you like, what you see is a very small portion of what that whole research is. And like I say, you know, we are studying for a long time with a very rigorous um, set of shoulders on us. And it's it's a long journey. And, you know, it's not a five minute discussion about what what we are putting out into the world. You know, there's there's a lot more to it. So. So, yeah. So filmmaking was my um, my last sort of uh, media um, or, you know, a bit of learning and and actually um it fascinated me even that added element of how that added to the practice and and the material so 
That's great. I'm going to have to apologise. I'm in the office here at the University of Cumbria and the gardeners just decided to blow leaves <laughs> back behind me. So you're going to hear it's the It's so close to lockdown, isn't it? <laughs> the joys of lockdown, indeed. So I apologise in advance for the humming noise behind me. is spoiling yeah. our event, but um, uh, what can we do? Um, yeah. That's great. Is there anybody in particular, um, Caroline, that you think played a very strong role in your project and, and oh, getting it to the finishing line? Absolutely. I mean, I think uh, like Sharon, I fully recognise the support of my family around me just in this that strange and, and sort of unprecedented time of, of being so it wasn't just being locked down. It was about being locked in, you know, locked into your your framework of what you were doing. And my family were great, you know, I, I re they really supported me and, and allowed me to do the most extraordinary things in my house, to turn it completely upside down into this chaotic <laughs> scene. But also um, the tutors really kind of came through for us because we were literally overnight thrown into this chaos. And we all arrived on this sort of uh, platform of a, of a computer screen and we were trying to work out how to make the best of it. And, this, and the tutors, you know, they, they kind of kept it together for everybody. <laughs> and also the, the rest of the cohort, we just kind of supported each other, which we would do anyway. But I think we went over and above in terms of that, that peer bond, you know, because if people were having a struggle, which they did, you know, we were kind of supporting and, and that, that was really good. It was really good to be part of that, you know. So there's a lot of thanks going out. <laughs> Thank you so much, Caroline. Um, appreciate you joining us and answering our, our questions today. And congratulations on exhibiting the work, getting to the finishing line. Um, so I'll bring in Lian into the into the screen. Lian has done. Um, Hi. Hello. Um, has done a, a very interesting uh, video work, isn't it? With the, a film, um, a film work was the the final. Uh, project that you brought into the MA. If you could tell us a little bit more about that project and this the inspiration behind it. Um, yeah, it was. Um, it's a film research in um, reality through various forms of perception um, uh, done from the domestic setting and um, I suppose it stemmed from my own sort of quest for a uh, true reality. Um, uh, you know, uh, when my perception of it has been clouded by anxiety, um, which I suppose is more, uh, is particularly relevant for a lot of people at the minute. <laughs> That's very interesting, and you you can see that on your on your film is I'm I'm trying not to give you spoilers. Um, it starts in kind of a slow place through life routine, and then it, it kind of twists at the end. So it kind of is a very interesting view on on reality and and, and what you perceive of it. Um, producing that through lockdown, what were the challenges that you faced um, with with getting the work finalized? without a lot of the resources you would have on campus? Um, yeah, it was very difficult. Um, I, I normally um, work with film and installation, so, um, you know, it would have been my intention to have this film shown within a, a sort of domestic staged installation because um, part of the work is getting the viewer to question um, really reality through the you know the physical and the non-physical um qualities of, of installation and um yeah so it was quite hard to adapt to this um solo element and trying to get the the viewer to question their physical reality which i've tried to do through um, you know the the trickery in the in the films and and through the fact that it is through the domestic and the viewer will probably be watching from within their domestic setting. Um, I think that um, the, yeah, it's been hard to juggle the. Um, I've got three children and was like homeschooling at the start, 
and there have been moments where I thought I wasn't going to be able to complete the MA, but um, my peers and my tutors have uh, helped support us through that, so that's been really good. That's brilliant. It's, it's great to, to hear that. And through that process of, of you know working with children at home, producing something at home, what was the the positive? What what did you sort of learn? What was the takeaway that you the positive takeaway that you took from the experience? Um, it really forced my work into a, a different um. To, to like a deeper level I feel um because when you're working in the studio with your same props and everything it, it you kind of are in that space and it's hard to push yourself out of that space so I think the positives of working in this situation was that it forced me to try and think of a different approach to my like how I would get my work across to other people and um, I think that worked quite, quite well, yeah. Super, that's great. Is there anybody you would like to thank for, um, or anybody that played a particular role in, in helping you get your work completed? While you do that, Leanne, if that's okay, I will be showing, uh, we had a request on the, the stream asking to show the work um, of, of the person who's speaking on, on the screen as well, so they could visualize what the finalized project is. So while, you, while you're doing the things, I will I'll take you from the screen momentarily just to show some of your work, if that's okay with you. Uh, and, yeah. But if you have anybody who you would like to shout out, or if there was somebody who played a special role in getting your project completed. Yeah, it's quite hard to talk about your work and not give too much of it away really for people to be able to view it and take what they want from it but um, I would give a shout out to uh, Jane and Nick um, for their support really and um, and to my peers because we've all been in um, group chats and really sort of egged each other on throughout the um, whole experience. Yes, definitely been a bit of a learning curve for all of us, um, including our including our tutors. Um, so Leanne, thank you so much. I've just brought you back to the screen for, for a little bit just to 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 thank you and to um, to say a goodbye for the time being. Um, again, if you have any questions for any of the artists, um, please uh, jot them down on the on the comments. There is quite a few with, of you uh, with us today. Um, watching this event but if you have any questions to any of the artists in particular uh, please just jot them down in the comments and they will respond uh, we might pick them up at the end if we have time as well but Holly created a, a very interesting um, project um, about sensing yourself and it was an installation it was a brief for um, a, propo a proposal for um, Tate Modern um, so it was a really interesting piece of work that I really would like to talk to yourself, to, to our guests about. Um, but if you bear with me, I'll try to bring Holly back into the screen and see if I can reconnect her. Just bear with me for a moment. There we go. <laughs> We're back on, Holly. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. Can I ask you to unmute your microphone? I've grown a little bit wise to that now. <laughs> um, and can you talk to us about the Sorry. inspiration? Sorry? No problem. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the inspiration behind your project and um, what, just the inspiration behind it, what the project about? It, it's quite an interest concept can really see from the image that um, I showed people a moment ago, but I'll bring you back to the screen as you were explaining it, if that's okay. Okay, um, well the work came from a previous module um, called A Fish Out of Water, which was basically an examination to, into the effects of exile. Um, after I personally experienced exclusion, 
and it's basically a sense of loss uh, which triggered sensing yourself. Uh, so it plays on the viewer's perceptions and allows them to experience uh, heightened bodily consciousness and allowing them to see themselves like surrounded, fragmented, uh, flaws and all. That sounds really interesting. And, and how was the process of trying to put this together um, amidst lockdown, amidst uh, you know, not having access because this is an installation, isn't it? And in your plan, this installation was going to be a, a, a sort of a sense, sens almost like a sensorial um, experience, wouldn't it? On, on the exhibition. Yeah, um, I think one of the biggest challenges for me um, was that I do work on quite a large scale. So I had to find a way to scale the work down whilst also create, like, creating it in, in an immersive way and keeping that immersive experience there for the viewer. Um, so although it took away from the experience, the piece film was filmed in a way which enabled the viewer to feel like they were still in that space. So not so much surrounded, but maybe looking from an upper viewer gallery, the way it was filmed. But I think one of the biggest challenges for me was coming in Coming back to the course after quite a substantial break, I had a, a two year break from my studies after I had my son and I came back for that, that very last module. So it was quite difficult for me to kind of get back into back into it after having the break. Yeah, I can I can completely appreciate that. And that's the little uh, cameo little gentleman that we see at the back of you, isn't that you, your son? <laughs> a, 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 a little back of yours, that's great. Um, so, producing it something on a larger scale, but bringing it, trying to, to bring it into a screen must, was obviously very difficult. What was, what did you learn from that experience? What was the positive takeaway that you, you sort of brought out of that? I think the biggest thing I learned was uh, I don't need to rush my ideas. I can just uh, kind of take it slow and just experiment different things because it definitely had a big impact to how I, my direction to art making and, and how I how I produce the work. Because previously I'd have an idea and I'd be like, right, go make it. Whereas this time I, I couldn't do that because I was in my house and I didn't have a lot of space. So I couldn't just make these big things that I'd done previously. So I kind of, experimented with lots of different small models um, and then if the summit wasn't right it was, it was a lot easier to change because it was on a smaller scale it wasn't this big thing that was like a massive expense and so yeah it, was, it definitely had a big impact on how I make the work and and, and how I, I go into making the work as well Super. and is there anybody that played a particular role helping you finalize that work is there anybody you would like to thank or mention or um anybody would like to 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 give a shout out to i think definitely uh, as caroline and leon have said like um jane and robert had a big influence and also the peers on the course because we had like group chats all the time and we got together and we'd, we'd have like crits between ourselves and saying like oh what do you think of this and i think when you're in isolation it's quite hard to make the work you don't have that input from anybody else so being able to talk to them was really helpful that's great thank you so much holly um, really appreciate you coming you coming out to to see and talk to us today um and i will let you out of the screen <laughs> and and say hi to the little man behind you for us thank you so much thank you Hi hey everyone, I will um, endeavour to play the video with the highlights of the work one more, ta one more time. We've still got a little bit of time um, in the event. We managed to do everything uh, within the time. Um, so I'll play the video one more time. The, the link for the page where you can see not just the work that is highlighted on the video, but also the other pieces of work and other images or other content that the artists have provided for the exhibition is available um, now you will obviously be mails with the link shortly um, but you will also be able to find it on our website university uh, of cumbria's website cumbria.ac.uk and if you just search ma show 2020 it will come up 
um, but in there you will have the main gallery page and if you click through the, the links you'll be able to see um, a, a quick artist interview about the work, what is next, their contact details if you want to get in touch with them and commission them um, for, for any work, um, but also more uh, pieces of work from them. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, if you have questions for the artist, please um, dot them down on the comment box. Um, I've seen a couple of already sort of thanks and, and ask questions to Sean, who I believe has, has answered. Um, but any questions, just just um, drop them in the comments. The, the video for this event will also be available through the link that you received for it. So um, I'll have to double check how long you'll be available for, but it will be, it is recorded and it will be available on the same event link. Um, I will endeavor to also put it on the, on the um, MA show page so you can review the interviews, um, you can view the artist's video highlights um, and you can explore the artist's work as well. to say thank you everyone for joining us today um, but I hope you enjoyed the event and please don't forget to visit the, the exhibition on the on the website and explore not just the artists that you've seen here but all the other artists who are 16 of them who are part of the exhibition this year. Thank you so much and we hope to see you soon.